Hello there and welcome once again to another video. This is Jenna from McGuire. Today I am sharing lots of info about the new Spellbinders Glimmer Foil Machine. I've been getting questions about this and I've been playing with it quite a bit lately and have had such fun. So I'm excited to share it with you. Now this machine allows you to do wonderful foiling techniques. And I have many different tips and tricks for you throughout this video. So you can make the most of what you can do with this machine. Now I have done many, many videos on foiling in the past and I'll link to a playlist up here on the top right. But this is very different. This machine applies heat and pressure. So you get almost like a foil letter press look. It is just gorgeous. What's really great about this machine is you don't have to use just the plates that are available for it, but you can also use many dies that you may already have. I also want to mention that I'm sharing this machine with you because I think it's a great tool. I did take a lot of time to use it and make sure I liked it before I recommend it. Okay, let's get started by taking a closer look at this fun machine. This is the Spellbinders Glimmer Hot Foil System. Now this is a lightweight machine that allows you to heat and press foil into your paper. Now there is a on off switch on the back and this entire area, this plate with the handle, this warms up, especially that gray area in the center. There are warnings on there that you shouldn't touch it. I don't think it would actually physically burn you, but it doesn't feel good if it gets super hot. Now there are little lights on the side that let you know when it's on, when it's ready to use, and then there's also a timer that helps you to get the best results. Okay, so in this gray area that gets hot, that's our working area, there is a grid there to help with getting good placement and lining things up. Now this comes with some accessories. One is the thin shim. I always use this when I'm doing my foiling. And there is also the clear plate that goes on top. I use that too. And sometimes I use an additional shim and I'll talk about this in the video. This also comes with an instruction manual that is very clear and helps you to figure out the best way to get the best results. Now the Glimmer machine also comes with a cooling mat to put your hot dyes on, which I'll show you later, along with a tool to help you handle the hot dyes. And there are also a couple free plates and foil to get you started. And I feel I should mention up front that to use this machine, you will also need a die cut machine. And I'll talk about that as we create. Okay, so let's start foiling. I'm going to do some basic foiling using the machine how it was intended to be used with hot foil plates. So I've turned my machine on, I've let it warm up so that the green light is on and says it's ready. This is a glimmer hot foil plate. It looks like a die, but it's actually just metal with raised areas that allow you to press your foil into the paper. Spellbinders has many of these hot foil plates available. Okay, so next you'll need some foil. There are many different types of glimmer hot foil rolls available. Some are available in individual colors and some are available in variety packs. For this first one, I'm going to use this iridescent foil. But keep in mind, there are many colors and many options, and the price is pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to start by cutting some foil that's a little bit bigger than my plate. Now, I find it best to kind of cut around your plate. The less excess you have, the better results you get. And I don't like to have any sharp corners. I find that sometimes those leave foil behind, so it's best to just trim around your plate. Okay, so now I'm laying my plate onto the hot area of my glimmer machine. I'm using the tool that comes with it to allow you to move it around to make sure that I have it positioned where I want. Now I'm going to take my foil and lay it pretty side down, so shiny side down, over the plate. Next I will add my cardstock that I plan to foil on, and then the shim and the plate that come with the machine. After I have these all positioned together, I'm going to press the button and this starts the timer. The timer goes a little less than a minute, I believe, and this is allowing heat to get into that plate, into the foil, into the cardstock to start the foiling process. Next, I'm going to get my die cut machine ready. The glimmer machine provides the heat, but we need a die cut machine to provide the pressure. 
You could use a variety of different die cut machines. I'll talk about that later. But I'm using the Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cut machine today. It's my favorite non-electric machine. Once that timer light stops blinking, you can take the handle of the glimmer plate and pull it out gently. Then we're going to take this and put it right into our die cut machine. And I like to feed it through the machine one direction and then back, and then we're ready to go. You'll notice I put some tape to hold the plates onto that base plate. You really don't need to do that. And you'll see later in the video I skipped that. I thought it would be helpful, but it really isn't necessary. So after I've fed the plates through the machine, I'm applying pressure. So there's heat and pressure in there. Once I'm done, I can go ahead and take everything apart. Now remember how I said there is a mat to put your hot dyes on? I've got that mat here, and I'm going to use that tool to move the die over to that mat so it cools down and it just takes a few minutes to cool. Now I can remove the foil from my cardstock and look at that perfect, perfect foiling. It really presses the foil into the paper for incredible results. So I trimmed this down and added it onto a note card. Very simple, but I felt that's all you needed with the detail of this foiling. So I liked this one so much that I went ahead and created another using a little bit different color cardstock and a different card design. But these cards show you the basic use of the Glimmer foil machine and how easy it is to use and the good results that you can get. Let's do another basic example so I can talk a bit more about the process. I'm doing everything the same as I did in the last example. I do want to mention that it's very easy to slide that plate out when it's ready, when the timer is done. You just pull on the handle towards you and it pops right out. And you take that and the plates over to your die cut machine. Now there is a list of die cut machines that are compatible with these plates, and I'll link to that below. But I find that most of the ones that I've ever used, or most of the die cut machines that I've ever used, work with this machine. I chose to use my Spellbinders Platinum today because this is my favorite non-electric machine. And I thought it would be easier to bring a machine in and out of the screen if there wasn't a cord attached to it. When I remove the foil, you may notice excess gold foil towards the top of the note card. That's because I didn't trim my foil down enough. Really, it's best to do so. However, if you have that little excess foil, just take a sand eraser or a regular eraser and you can easily remove that excess foil. And nobody will ever know it's there and you can end up with perfect results. Okay, my next example also uses a hot plate from Spellbinders. This elegant border I think would be wonderful for holiday cards or non-holiday cards. I'll actually use the one that I'm foiling now on a anniversary card, which I'll show you later in this video. This time I have used like a matte silver foil. I put it face down over the plate. I'm putting my white cardstock on it. Then I'll add the shim and the clear plate on top. I'll push that button to start the timer. Once the timer is done and the light goes solid, I will go ahead and run it through my die cut machine. In the bit of time that it takes for this to warm up, I like to get my next project or next step in the project ready to go. Now we'll run this through the die cut machine. You just pull those plates out, feed it into the machine, and I go back and forth a couple times. Now there is no cutting going on when you run this through the die cut machine. The only thing that's happening is that hot plate is getting pressed into the foil and the cardstock. Now I should mention that all of my examples today show foiling on cardstock. I use a heavyweight cardstock for this, but you can also foil onto fabric and ribbon and other things, and I'll show that in a future video. I also wanted to mention that those tweezers or the tool that it comes with actually has a magnet on it. So you can pick up the hot plate that way if you want to, but I find using them as tweezers to work just as well. So now we can remove the foil and check out that beautiful result. It's hard to see in the video. That's the worst thing about foils is you can't see them in photos and videos well, but you, this has like a matte silver result that's pressed into the paper and you can see all of the foil transferred. Okay, so let's start making some cards using this foiling with the plates. Then we'll get into foiling with dies.
For this card here, I use the Spellbinders Flower Hot Plates. These are cool because there are the hot plates in the shape of the flowers and the leaves, but then there are also coordinating dies in the set, so you can cut the flowers out afterwards. Now, for some reason, I decided to foil my flowers one at a time. I definitely could have done all three foiled flowers at once since there's room on the plate, but for some reason, I just went with the one. This time I'm using a rose gold foil that's just beautiful. After the timer went off, I took the plates out and I'm feeding it through my die cut machine. And there you see that beautiful foil pressed into the cardstock. I will repeat this process and do the foiling with the other flower plates in the set. Once all my foiling is complete, I can use the coordinating dies from the set. And I'm going to position them right around my foiling. Then I will run this through my die cut machine and do normal die cutting. I'm not using the glimmer plates. I'm just using my die cut machine and their regular plates. So this will cut out each of the flowers. And the nice thing is it won't mess up the foiling. I also will do foiling on the background of my card. These are the leaf foil plates that are included in that flower set that I showed you before. And I'm using gold foil for this. Now there are two leaf foil plates in that set, but I wanted three clusters of leaves. So I'm starting by foiling the two sets of leaves. Once I'm done, I'm going to reposition one of the leaf plates and foil again. The nice thing about this machine is you can foil on top of other foil or run it through again without messing up your first round of foil. I find that sometimes when I'm using a laminator to do foiling techniques, running it through a second time will mess up whatever I did at the beginning. I think it'd be fun to do layering of different colors of foil. So here, after doing the third leaf cluster, we have our gold leaves on our craft background. So I trimmed that piece down and added it to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. I put a line of liquid adhesive right up against that craft piece and then added a thin strip of dark peach cardstock for finishing touch. I then have all my foil and die cut flowers that I'm adding with some foam tape and I also added a few gold gemstones for accents. I hope you can see in the video here how perfect that foiling ends up. I find that it gives very smooth results and you really can't damage it by doing additional die cutting or inking or stamping on top. And by the way, that you make me smile sentiment on that card is from this Ink Blot Shop stamp set. This is one of those stamp sets I've been using a lot lately because it has pretty much every occasion you could want in regular text and in the block label look. Okay, so now that we've covered many examples of using the Glimmer Foil Machine with the hot plates, I wanted to show you how you can use the machine with many of the wafer thin dies that you may already have. Now, according to Spellbinders, not all wafer thin dies work for foiling. However, every single one that I tried out happened to work great. So I just encourage you to try it with any dies that you may have. Now, I wanted to start out with the toughest example, a very detailed die. This is the Spellbinders Palm die. Now, this is super detailed. And if I can get good foiling with this, I think I could get good foiling with many different styles of dies. Okay, now the biggest thing with this is make sure that you put your die onto the hot plate so that the cutting edge of the die is facing up. That's very important. Then you put your foil on just as you did before. You put down your cardstock. Then one thing that is different, you'll put down a shim, then a piece of cardstock, just for a little bit of added shim or a little extra pressure, then your clear plate. Now I found you don't always need that cardstock shim in there. If you have a super detailed die, the shim seems to be helpful, but it isn't always necessary as you'll see later in this video. So now I will push the button on my timer and let it warm up just like I did when I was foiling with the plates. Once the timer goes off, you remove the plates, feed it through your die cut machine, and I go back and forth a couple of times. Now when I remove this, I end up with that gorgeous detailed foiling. But since dies aren't really meant to foil, there might be excess foiling around the edges just like I had happen before on the red cardstock, but that's okay. 
All you have to do is take a sand eraser or regular eraser and just sand away any of the excess. You can even use it over the foiling and it doesn't harm it. It won't mess up your pattern. So I find that at the end, I end up with perfect results using a wafer thin die that I had for die cutting. I hope here you can see the detail and the shine that you get. Now I really wanted to keep this card simple so that the focus would be on that foiling. So I trimmed my green piece down and added it to a white note card. Along the edges of the green piece, I glued two very thin strips of gold cardstock, and I also added a sentiment die cut from gold cardstock. I really like the simplicity of this card, and you can get completely different looks by using different colors of cardstock and different colors of foil. You could also change out the sentiment to really be any occasion. So let's do another example of using dies for foiling. This time I'm going to use multiple dies and multiple colors of foil. This is the Spellbinders Little Leaf, or sorry, Little Plants die set. I've used this in a video before and I'll link it up there on the top right. Now I have all three dies in place and I cut three pieces of foil in different colors. We have gold, rose gold, and pink. And I'm positioning them over each of the dies. Remember, your dies are cutting side up because you don't want to cut into your machine. So now I'm putting my paper on top, my cardstock. Then I have the two plates that the Glimmer machine comes with and that cardstock shim in place since these are detailed dies. I'll run the timer and once it's done, I can feed it through my die cut machine. Remember, this isn't cutting, it's just adding pressure. And then I can remove my foil. You can see there's very little excess foil with this. I find when using dies, I sometimes get excess foil. When using those plates at the beginning, I rarely get excess foil. But all of the excess foil can be easily erased with that sand eraser or regular eraser and check out that colorful detailing that you get. Now it's kind of hard to see in the video, but in real life it catches the light and adds a lot of interest. I just added a simple die cut sentiment and a few pearls and put it onto a white note card. So this shows you can use multiple dies at once and use multiple colors for a fun look. I also wanted to show that you can use coordinating dies for stamp sets that you have for a really fun foil detail. So if you look closely, you'll see a foil outline around my stamped images. It almost looks like a halo and it's really eye catching in real life. For my example, I'm using the new Pretty Pink Posh decorative ornament stamp set. I thought these ornaments were beautiful and I also had the coordinating die set so I can show this foiling technique. It is best to start with the foiling first. I have my three coordinating dies on my glimmer machine with the die cutting edge facing up. I then am placing silver foil over each of the dies, making sure to put the shiny side down. Then I will put my cardstock on top. Then I have my two plates that come with the machine. This time I'm not using a cardstock shim because there's not much detail in these wafer thin dies, but you'll want to experiment with whatever dies that you may have. Once the timer is up and it's nice and hot, I can run it through my die cut machine to add the pressure. And there you can see the beautiful silver outline that we get. So now I'm going to use my Misty stamping tool just to help with the alignment, but you could use an acrylic block instead if you want. I'm lining up each of the stamps inside of that foil outline. And then I'm stamping each of the images with Versamark ink and adding silver embossing powder. So we'll have a silver heat embossed image inside of that silver foil outline. After I heat embossed, I added some tone on tone coloring with Copic markers to each of the ornaments. And I also added white to the berries in the ornaments with my white paint pen. I used a silver gel pen to color in the tops of the ornaments and also to draw the string that attaches the ornaments to the top of the card. At this point, I decided I wanted some dimension. So instead of using the white gel pen, I used white Nouveau drops. That just adds a little touch of dimension to all of those berries. I also put silver Nouveau drops in the background. The sentiment is a thanks die cut from Birch Press. I like to make a lot of thanks cards during the winter season as I need them often. 
When you look closely, you can see that silver foil outline right outside of the heat embossing and coloring. It is definitely something that catches your eye in real life and kind of hard to show on a video. I really like the look of using the coordinating dies to foil around a stamped image. Okay, let's do another example. Remember that elegant border silver foiled background that I showed you earlier? I'm gonna finish that card off with some heat embossing and foiling with coordinating dies. This is the Concord and Ninth Notable Numbers stamp set and I have the coordinating die set. I'll be using both today to make a happy 50th anniversary card for my friend to give to her parents. I'm placing the dies onto my glimmer machine with the cutting edge up and I'm placing my silver foil on top. Now I'm freezing this here so you can see that I put a gigantic piece of foil down. I did not need a piece that big. Like I said, I think it's best to trim it down and here you'll see why. I put my white cardstock on top and my two plates, set the timer, when the timer was done, I ran it through the die cut machine for pressure and check it out. All that excess foil ended up leaving behind around the edges. If I would have trimmed it up close, I wouldn't have had that. In this case, it didn't matter because I ended up cutting them out anyways. So I cut out my foiled outlines. Then I added the stamping in the center and assembled it all in my card. I even added silver glitter cardstock strips at the top and the bottom so that I had lots of silver shine going on here. On the inside, it simply says happy anniversary. Okay, my next example shows how to use a simple large stacking die along with a stamp to create a simple card. I use the Hero Arts Ornament Infinity die set. I use one of the large ornament dies from this along with one of the ornament topper dies. Now I could do any kind of stamping in the center of that ornament, but I decided to go with this gorgeous Gina K Very Merry Christmas stamp set. I am crazy about the lettering in this set and I like how they form shapes. I thought that large circle sentiment image at the top left would be perfect to go inside of my foiled ornament. So I have my ornament die on my glimmer machine with the cutting edge facing up. I'm putting my foil on top of this and you can see that I trimmed it down this time so I get great results. I will then put my cardstock, my two plates, I'll hit the timer button, let it warm up and when the timer goes off, I'll run it through my die cut machine for pressure. I then gold heat emboss that have yourself a merry little Christmas right in the center. I die cut an ornament topper from some gold cardstock and drew a string with a gold foil pen. I trimmed this down and added it to a white note card so a little bit of the white shows on the sides. A very simple card to make, but you can see how that gold foil outline really makes the card. Keep in mind you could use any kind of inking or stamping over this or even mask the ornament and stamp around it very easily by using that die to cut your mask. Okay, so my last example shows some more foiling, but also how you can use the Glimmer foil system for letterpress. Let's start with the foiling. I'm using this stamp set from Trinity Stamps. This is a newer stamp company and I really like their images, especially this little reindeer. Now in the coordinating die set are star dies to cut out all those little star stamped images. I'm just going to use the dies alone to create stars. So I have my little star dies on my glimmer machine with the cutting edge up. I've cut little pieces of iridescent silver foil to go over each of those dies. Then I'll add my white cardstock, the two plates. I'll hit that timer button, let it warm up. Then take the plates out once it's ready, run it through my die cut machine for pressure. And then we end up with these thin lined foiled stars that would be perfect for my background of my card. You'll see there is a little bit of excess foil on two of my stars, not much at all. So I can easily rub that away with an eraser. And here you can see that fine detailed foiling in the star shapes. Okay, so next I wanted to show you the letterpress background and then we'll pull the whole card together. It's hard to see, but that white cardstock has a letterpress look to it. And you can do this with the glimmer machine by not using the heat. You don't need the heat for this. So I have my glimmer plate, and then I also have one of the hot foil plates that Spellbinders has. 
This time I'm using watercolor paper. You want a thicker kind of paper and watercolor paper seems to work great. I then put down the two plates that come with the machine and I like to also add another shim. I use my memory box metal adapter plate that I use normally for die cutting. It just adds a little pressure. I then run this through my die cut machine to really put that pressure on it and this takes that plate and presses it into the die giving you a true letter press look. I didn't need heat for this at all. You could use it while it's hot, it doesn't matter. But the letter press is done just by applying that pressure. So here is the completed card. You can see the letter press on the background. Then my deer and stars I colored with Copic markers and trimmed it down and added it to the center. You can see the silver foiling outline around those stars. I like that it makes it a little subtle in the night sky, but also adds a little bit of sparkle. So this shows that you can use a lot of different wafer thin dies to create detailed foiling. I look forward to sharing more examples in the future if you're interested, you'll have to let me know in the comments below. I, I really like how foiling looks when you use detailed background dies too. I hope this look at this glimmer machine has been helpful to you. There are so many more things it can do and on different materials such as fabric, but this is a good start and it shows the versatility. If you're interested in the supplies that I use, they're always in my description below. In the middle are a couple other foiling videos you might like. I thank you for spending time with me. I hope you'll return again soon and have a wonderful weekend.